Okay. So here we are. This is the map editor. Uh, it's been requested that I do a tutorial on how to build a map. So I'm going to do it start to finish and do it as thoroughly as I can. So I hope that you guys enjoy and I hope you use this to uh, make many maps in the future that are bug free. This is how I make a map. So first of all it starts with the idea. It's got to start even before we get into talking about the menu and actually creating the prison. It begins with the idea, the theme. And I've seen some prisons that are well built, but the theme just doesn't attract anybody. It doesn't pull them in. And everyone wants their map to be viewed. Everyone wants, th wants their map to be played. And uh, one way to get attention for your map is to have a really fun theme. Um, if you've just started watching my channel, then you know, uh, you might not know, that uh, I have put up plenty of videos. Um, and uh, plenty of custom maps. I've played over probably 100 different custom maps. Um, including the ones that uh, were too buggy to actually escape from. But uh, I've played so many maps, and I find that the videos that get the most views, that gets the most attention, are, b are, are the videos that have the best theme. And I'll give you some examples. Um, Blackbeard Ship is one of the best-liked um, videos or custom prisons of all time, and videos of mine um, from custom prisons. So uh, that draws in a lot of people. The Amazon Treehouse um, draws in a lot of people. Um, anything about, uh, you know, you have a spaceship design, likes to draw in a lot of people. Um, I had one that was from The Hobbit, you know, it draws in a lot of people. You try to create a theme, create an idea. Uh, my first prison um, was an insane asylum, was the idea behind it. Uh, the second uh, prison I had was called Castle Sivne, which is uh, an actual castle in the real world um, in Scotland. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to try to make a map based on that? And um, the theme for my third map was um, I w I, it was a graphical illusion that I wanted to take advantage of. And so I built a map around that, and that was the theme, the bridge to nowhere, trying out different ways of escaping and kind of holding your breath as you cross the bridge. And if it's the wrong bridge, you fall through it. If it's the right bridge, you're off the map. My last prison was called Lake Town, and the theme was that you'd be out on this lake. It'd be very difficult to get to land and to escape. Um, and I, it was all about misdirection, red herrings, uh, things leading you one way, but uh, not really leading anywhere. Um, so those were the themes of my previous maps, to give you examples, and to some of the maps that are most popular on my channel. So I'm sure you're tired of sitting here staring at a gray screen, so let's get to uh, the actual stuff, shall we? First, you got to go up to your uh, menu, and you have Project, Mode, Panel, layer and finalize. So project's the simplest, it's just like any other uh, file menu. You've got new by creating a new, load an old one, load a recent project. This is project down under, which was the sort of practice project to get me started for this episode. Saving your map and help. I've never actually used help. We might actually click on that to see what that does. Uh, we have paint and erase. This is just the difference between uh, are you painting something down or are you erasing and deleting something. Um, we have panel, which is going to be the first thing that we talk about. Tiles, objects, and properties. Tiles are the things that you paint with. They're the background. Objects go on top. Uh, there are things that you interact with. Um, and then we have properties, which is the first menu uh, we will deal with after you create a new map. So we're going to hold off on talking about uh, the details of properties until then, which will be in just a second. Next is layer, which is pretty easy to understand. You have the underground layer, the ground layer, which you start on. Uh, vents, which is just above the ground layer, and is uh, one tile to the north, one above the ground level, and roof is also one above ground level, but same as vent level. And the one I left out here in the middle is zones. Uh, zones is going to be kind of special, and we will deal with zones later. Zones are for designating a shower area, or gym area, or canteen area, or job area, or cell area, Roll call area, all the areas get zones. Jobs, every job, well, not every job, but many jobs get zones. So we'll deal with zones later. Also, zones uh, were famously dangerous. They can kind of erase your whole map and reset everything uh, if you're not careful. I don't know what triggers it, but uh, people used to complain about it a lot. Um, but we'll avoid that entirely because we're going to teach good saving etiquette. Um, I save frequently under new names. And so this uh, project un down under would turn into project down under two and project down under three and four and five and six every time I do something major. We save it under a different number. Okay. 
And then finally, uh, we have finalize. We'll deal with these when, much later, but uh, for now, validate just make sure that your prison has the bare minimum. Okay? Export just turns your prison from a project file to a CMAP file, uh, and then you should not immediately publish it. After you turn it from a CMAP file, or project file to a CMAP file, you want to play the map and test it out and escape before publishing because there is a publishing error where it won't let you update your map. So really make sure you do all of your playtesting before, uh, after you export, but before you publish. Okay? And you can even add in, uh, when you export, you can add in tons of extra prisoner stashes and then playtest it and then go back in and uh, go to back to your project file, the original project file, delete those prisoner stashes, re-export the new map without the pris uh, prisoner stashes and finally publish it without them. So you have the help when playtesting but at the same time, uh, you can publish without it. You can make it a difficult map. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's do a new one. We're going to call this one similarly to down under. We're going to call it underground. Underground. Underground tunnel. Well, let see. let's do a project. Project tunnel. Yeah. Project tunnel. We always call them projects. We don't give them the real name of the prison. Which I'm not even sure what the real name of the prison is going to be yet. So don't worry about that right now. Just get started. Project Tunnel. Um, I've had Project Water, I think, for Lake Town or something like that. I don't know. Project Lake. I can't remember. I could open it up and look, but let's not do that right now. And I know the tile set that I'm going to want to mess with is going to be San Poncho. I kind of want it to be like a desert like, although I'm going to color shift the tile set. So uh, let's begin. That's it. Okay, so here you can stop looking at a gray screen. You see this little magenta or pink color on the borders. You see this box here and this box here. This box here, if we go up to panel, you see that the tiles and the objects are dark, whereas properties is not for some reason. But um, tiles and objects, so can we get rid of that or no? Perfect. So these are the tiles. We're going to talk about what all of those do in time. And these are the objects that sort of go on top of them. Okay, so right now it's going to ask us about the properties menu to get our prison started. What do we want? And the first thing that they're asking for is the style of prison and routine structure. Insec is minimum security, like center perks. Medsec is medium security. Maxsec is max security, like iron gate. And the camp style of schedule, which is like jungle and stalag frucht. Okay. So let's go take a look at all of those. Now I have those over pulled up in pulled up in Chrome. So here we have it. We have uh, the center perks, the min security. It has morning roll call, breakfast, um, then free period, then lunch, then a leisure work period, then exercise, then shower block, then evening meal, evening free period, evening roll call, and lights out. This schedule is fairly easy because there is no roll call in the middle of the day. Um, there's only one job period, and there's plenty of free time. Uh, you've got an evening free period and a morning free period. So you have lots of time to yourself. If you want to make an easy prison, this is probably the one you want to choose. Then we go to Shankton. Shankton's a little more difficult because it's the one that has the afternoon roll call. If you, if you have like a difficult long escape that's a big map, and you've got people trying to run all over the place to get stuff done, then the afternoon roll call can really throw a wrench in the middle of that. For example, on um, the Blackthorn Asylum underground maze dig, it's really tough to have to always be coming back and checking in for the afternoon roll call. So that's kind of the difficult part of that, and it plays well with particularly big prisons with big layouts, where you have to run around a lot. Okay, But otherwise, it's pretty, pretty regular. Morning roll call, breakfast, work, roll call, afternoon free time, evening meal, exercise period, shower, evening free time. You still get two free times, and evening roll call, and then lights out. And then the next one is Iron Gate. And the first thing to know about Iron Gate is that um, it is very short. The others go until, I think, 10 o'clock is the roll call, and then lights out is 11. And then wake up is at 8 o'clock, I believe. And so you wake up an hour later, you go to sleep uh, two hours earlier, and it's a really big difference. It's a really big difference. Your days are a lot shorter, and if you are going to do a, a map with a schedule, you really should have a way to do a lot, um, to get a lot done at night. Uh, your prisoner, the player, should be able to get out and do things at night.
whether in the vents or the roof or ground level or whatever, they should be be able to work at night because the day is very short. Um, that's pretty much it. There is an afternoon roll call on this as well, but the day is so short you barely even notice it. It is worth mentioning that uh, on this this uh, schedule, you do not actually have to show up for exercise or shower block. They just don't care if you're there or not. Um, so that's something else to know to note. And finally, there is the jungle compound um, Stalagfruit camp style schedule, which is morning roll call, breakfast, leisure work, exercise, free period, meal time, leisure work, shower block, evening roll call, and lights out. And um, what's interesting about this one is there's actually two work periods, which can give you a lot of money. Um, so that can really bring the money up a lot. And what do I want to choose for my map? That's the question. Uh, let's go back over here and let's figure that out. So here we are. What do I want? Do I want medium sec? Do I want... Uh, I don't think I want the short day. The question is, do I want camp? Do I want to have two work periods? And do I want to have to have them check in in the middle of the day? Yeah, you know what? Let's have them check in in the middle of the day. Um, the next thing we have to do here... Let's, let's go down this way. Uh, prison style meter security. NPC level is uh, the, the level of the inmates and guards in the prison. This is like how their stats are. And so we want to break them high. We want this to be a tough prison. Leisure music, we're going to go ahead with Iron Gate, I think. Yeah, I don't want the, like, the bird sounds of jungle. I don't want like the San Pancho sort of Mexican feel. So Shankton, Stalag, Perks, or I guess I'll just go Iron Gate floor can stay sand, you can turn it to other things like grass 1, grass 2, grass 3, snow, black, and DTAF. There's black, sand, snow, grass 1, grass 2, grass, sorry, grass 1, grass 2, grass 3, snow, ooh, shocking to the eyes, sand, black, like space, and then DTAF, the message that pops up from the warden on day 1 of the prison. It's not actually for the DTAF. It's for the next thing down here. So warden name. We're not going to pick a warden name right now. We're just going to say warden blah blah. And we're going to say blah blah blah. We can always come back and change the note later. Okay. So it's just the warden name. We might not even put warden. We might just put blah blah. Okay. And then how many inmates do you want in your prison? This includes the player. So this is how many cells you should make. Um, if you want to include a desk that is unoccupied, so that could be a good place to store contraband. If you want to include one of those, then you would make an extra room uh, beyond this number. So if there was 10 inmates, you'd make 11 rooms. And if you wanted two extra unoccupied desks, then you'd make uh, 12 rooms. And you would leave this number at 10. And those extra desks uh, that would have cell zones would be unoccupied desks. So that's how you make unoccupied desks. I'm going to go, I decided this yesterday, I'm going to go, or Friday. I'm going to go with six. I think that's a good number. And I'd like to up the number of guards a little bit. I don't want just like, you know. Uh, let's go with nine guards. Yeah, why not? Nine guards to six inmates. Yeah. And you have a choice for the grounds. Inside only. Hold on a second. There it is down at the bottom. Inside only equals any outside ground tile is considered out of bounds except safe zone markers. So basically, anytime you go outside, you get shot. Um, or, but you can actually create like a courtyard or a yard for them to go out and get exercise in um, by creating a safe zone over that. Um, so we're not going to worry about that because our prison is probably going to be mostly outside. We're going to have some buildings, but we're going to have as much outside stuff as we can. Inside, outside is main prisons inside, but allowed outside when doors are open. That means when the purple doors are open after breakfast and before 10 o'clock, I think. Uh, so if that's the style you want, where there's inside and outside, you don't necessarily want people to get shot. Um, you can do that, and then you can choose that these borders be expanded so that if you don't want people going in a certain area, even though it's outside, when they go there, their heat will go up and they will get shot by tower guards. Um, but at nighttime, they can just walk through it. So be careful about that, too. Um, so I think we just want to go with outside, which is going to be uh, main prison area is outside. So you will not get shot unless you're chipping or cutting or digging or something like that. You're fine on being outside. In fact, most of the prison will be outside. So there's no need to uh, have doors which keep people in and all that. So I'm going to go with that. That sounds like fun to me. 
Um, let's keep going then. So that's the main panel of properties, but you'll see in the upper left, you have choices. You have a little toggle box, and you have jobs. And you can have between three through five jobs. You can't have less than three jobs. You can't have more than five jobs. Um, I'm going to choose to start my person off. I don't want this to be too easy. This is not a you know beginner prison, so no job. You've got to get the job yourself if you want some cash. And I'm thinking what we want is we're going to want to have a wood shop because we're going to want to be able to dig. There's going to be some digging on this map. That's what I'd like to see. Um, should we include the metal shop? No, because there's two work periods. And if we include the metal shop, then I feel like that'll be too... Too much. Too much. Too much money. No deliveries, no metal shop job. There's not really gardening. It's a bunch of sand. So let's do kitchen. Do you want to do laundry? Laundry would be three. Since there's six people, let's do four. And let's do library. So you can go to into the cells if you want to without being yelled at. No janitor. I hate that job. It's the worst job in the world. Ugh. Don't even put it in your prison. Gardening's okay. Gardening and the janitor will actually generate the spots that need to be gardened or janitored. The oil spill things, the mess, by where you place the prisoner walk points. So if you want more, you know, garden gardening things to be gardened, put more waypoints for the prisoners in like the um, on grass, on in this case sand. Um, if you want more janitor waypoints, put the waypoints for the prisoners walking to on inside tiles that are floors and then the mess will appear on the floors in those spots, just so you can control it a little bit. Um, the library job, I believe it's the library job. The library job, what else, 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 what else? Is it just the library job? I think it's just the library job that doesn't, the mailman job might be as well. There's Janitor and actually, I'm gonna take it back. Let me say janitor, gardening, library, and mailman. I don't think they have zones because you're leaving. Uh, for mailman, you just pick up the mail and then you're going to the desks of the people, so you're wandering. So you're not. If you had a zone for mailman, you would get yelled at if you weren't in the zone during the job. Do you see what I mean? Like if you're not in the deliveries job when it's deliver when it's work period, they'll yell at you. Same thing for metal shop. Same thing for kitchen. They know you're supposed to be there. But mailman's allowed to wander. Librarian's allowed to wander. Janitor has to wander. Gardening has to wander. So there's no zones for those four. And you won't get in trouble if you have those jobs. You'll just lose your job if you don't finish it. All right, so no job and four jobs. Library, kitchen, laundry, wood shop. Choose what's right for your prison. In this case, I went wood shop because I know they'll be digging. I went kitchen because it's a fun job and it's an easy way to you know win people over and, and raise opinion. Laundry, it's a kind of a dull job, but that's a good way to get a guard uniform. And library, um, it's an okay job, and it lets you get into the cells. I mean, if you're searching desks, they'll still yell at you, but uh, if they just see you in the cell, then it's not a big deal. And so that can be fun, too, if you don't like to be sneaky. Moving right along. The last one here is perimeter. Perimeter is just, it expands this guy. So if we do left boundary. As you see, as you increase it by each block, it just goes forward one. And each side does that. And what you can do is create a little perimeter. And the prison perimeter is a box around the map edge that is considered out of bounds. Players seen outside the perimeter will be punished by guards. They will be shot. Um, hold tab key in the map editor to show the current perimeter edgings, then edit as needed here. I'm not going to use that. I don't really find that that's a thing that is necessary in my prisons. In fact, not only am I not going to leave it alone, I'm going to turn it to zero. I'm going to handle all defenses on my prison. I'm going to make sure we got everything covered. And that's that. That's all it is. Okay? So that's the beginning of how to make a map. Um, once you're done with that, you can just uh, close it. Close it. If we want to open it again, we want to go back to properties. Everything here should be saved. Just as like, wait, what? It's not saved. we got to go back and put it in again. I think it's because I opened it twice. Camp, NPC level high, iron gate, sand, project tunnel, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Six. Nine. Outside. Jobs. Library, kitchen, laundry, wood shop. Perimeter. No, we want no perimeter, sir. Okay, so cool. And now we close it, and that should be good. 
Yes, it's saved, okay? It's only because we opened it twice, and we were confusing it. So, um, before we close off for the first episode, uh, I do want to show a few things. So, let's talk about um, some shortcuts. So, the first shortcut, let's close that, is to take some floor, for example. This is one of the tiles. And what we want to do is just, um, we could click it and click one box at a time. Okay? And then you could go up to mode and say, no, I didn't like that, let me erase. Okay, that's good. I want to put one back. You know what? I liked it. Go back to paint and, and do that. Okay? But instead of going up to the menu, there is a shortcut key. It is spacebar. If you hit spacebar, you'll see that it goes from yellow to red and back to yellow whenever you hit spacebar. So you can, instead of going up to the menu, you can just say, hey, you know, I didn't like that. Let me just erase all that right there. And then go back and say, you know what? I did like that. And you can click and drag. Same thing once you're in erase mode. Just click and drag. I'm holding left click right now and just dragging around to erase everything. Okay, back to the the paint mode. Um, you can also do, um, let me see if I can get it here. You can click, right click, and drag to do all the same tile. And that works with floor tiles pretty well. But as you see, say, with uh, wall tiles, it looks kind of funky because they're not meant to be arranged that way. Okay. And, of course, we want to delete it. We can do the exact same thing. So I hit spacebar, right-click and drag, and it deletes it in a block. See? Very nice. Very convenient. Um, so that is to drag ob objects. Let me check it off my list. We've got spacebar. we got to the right-click and drag for the same stuff. Um, you can also do, like, for example, let's say I go over here and I have this floor. Or rather, I just make a whole floor. And I say, you know what, I don't, I want, I don't want to do this tile anymore. I want to go back and do this tile. You could come back over here to grab this floor tile and, and start making it. Or you could hold Control, left shift the tile, let go, and now you've switched tiles. So and I'm like, okay, well, I like those four right there, but I want to go back to this. I'll just click that and do that. And again, I want to go back to this one. Well, you know what? This was just control. Left click once. Let go of control. And I'll do those four. And I want to go back to these. So I'll control, left click. And I'll just drag it like that. So there you go. There's another one. You've got control, left click to copy the tiles in case you're too lazy to run back over here. Be like, Where was that corner tile? You can just grab the corner tile real fast because it's, it's already on the screen over here in this building. And you just control, left click, and you got it. Um, let's see. Shift, drag, release to copy. Shift, drag, release. Nope, that wasn't it. Shift, drag, release. Yeah, it's left click. You hold down shift, you left click and drag, and then when you release it, you've copied those tiles. Many people ask me, how do I copy a large selection in the map editor? And that's how you do it. So yeah, I'm going to do it again. Instead of doing uh, 4x4, I'm going to do the 8x8. I go up to the corner I want it, I hold down left shift, and I drag holding left click, and when I'm done I let go with left click, I'm still holding shift, and I'm just still holding shift. As long as you want it, you can do it as many times as you want. Still hold shift, and then when you're done doing all of your copying, you can go ahead and let go of shift. And there you have it. That's the last one, how to copy uh, large uh, sections. And the last thing I want to show you here is with doors really any objects, these are objects, these are tiles, any object that you have, let's say you have a row of doors here, and let's say I'm going to go ahead and put down a, I'm accidentally going to put down a wall right there, and I want to keep going with my, my doors, and I put the door over the wall, and I think, okay, I've got a door there, people can walk through it. One of the problems is people will not be able to walk through the door that has the wall block there because it, it's blocking them. And the way to see that on your map is to hold down Q. Okay, so here I go, and it makes all the objects on the map disappear. And now you can see clearly, oh no, that's horrible. I have that wall there. But how do we get it how do we get it gone? So now I'm gonna go over to erase. I think it's this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase that one. And now it erased uh, it erased the tile that was there and it leaves the sand underneath. And I don't want that sand underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and cold control and just quickly copy oh, up, look what I did. I didn't switch back from erase mode. So first switch back from erase mode. Now I'm just gonna copy this tile right here, it turns pink click it, left left click, and now I've copied it, so I'll just go 
fill those back in. Now I'm going to copy this guy. And that way I don't have to put down another door. There you go. You can copy objects and tiles. So that is it for the basics. Um, the next time we come back, we are going to work on building the actual prison itself. Okay, so that will be part two. I will see you next time for part two. Let's just go ahead and make sure we save this guy. What do we want to call this? Project Tunnel. Let's do it. Don't forget to save. Save often. Okay, we're going to delete this stuff all tomorrow, and we're going to get started making buildings and talking about the tile sets and the objects that are there. Mostly we'll be trying to do tiles tomorrow and what the tiles do and how to use them and what they all are. Okay? So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, uh, I hope I've covered everything. If I didn't cover every anything that you know of, if there's more shortcut keys or there's some trick that you know, um, by all means, leave it in the comments below. Um, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you are not already. And I will see you next time.